The Surface Studio is one of the most impressive all-in-one PCs on the market, but is it any good? Today I'll share with you the pros and cons in my full review. Stay tuned. When it comes to Microsoft Surface Studio, there's a lot of things to like about this device, but there are some errors I think that Microsoft has made. Now, it is a really interesting concept device. I'm not sure I would personally drop $4,000 on it. Then again, when I do use it, I happen to like it a lot. There are a few questions though that we need to answer, specifically who is this for and who is it not for? And there, I think Microsoft has muddied the waters a little bit and maybe went a little too narrow in their focus. Let's get right to the hardware. There are three different SKUs of the Surface Studio that you can buy from Microsoft, and this is where it gets a little bit messy, and I find some of the choices a little bit baffling. The first version is an Intel Core i5 processor, and the two higher versions are Intel Core i7s. Both of these go into the 3.6 gigahertz range, and while they're good processors, they are technically high-end laptop processors and not necessarily desktop class ones. They're only 45 watts, and because of that, while powerful, they're not the most powerful available on the market. They're also the older Skylake versions and not the Kaby Lakes, which are just about to hit the market here in early 2017. There are also three options for RAM, 8GB, 16GB, and 32GB. None of that is too surprising, although the 8GB model is a little bit strange. When it comes to internal storage, Microsoft has three choices, and it's all a little bit confusing. These are rapid hybrid drives, which means part of the OS lives on a faster SSD system, while the slower part lives on a traditional hard disk drive. It's a little bit unusual for such a high-end system, and it does affect the performance. The three versions include a 64GB SSD with a 1TB hard drive, a 128GB SSD with 1TB hard drive, and a 128GB SSD with a 2TB hard drive. Now what makes all this a little bit weird is the fact that this is such an expensive system. We're talking around $4,000 for the high-end one. And when you basically go with a rapid hybrid drive, you're going to have a lot of performance degradation. If you're shooting for the professional class, I'm not sure who would actually want this. Now, you can actually swap out the drives yourself, but it's not easy. In fact, we'll do a separate tutorial on this, but it's a lot of work compared to, say, a laptop. You're not just going to slap in this drive. I'm not really sure why Microsoft made this decision, but they did. So we'll just have to kind of live with it. Microsoft gives users four USB 3.0 ports, which is really nice, but there's no USB Type-C port for Thunderbolt 3. That's a little bit strange for such an expensive device. In two years, you're definitely going to want a Type-C port, especially one with Thunderbolt 3. There's also a mini display port, which allows you to daisy chain external monitors to the Surface Studio. However, you can't input devices into the studio. So if you have a Surface Book or a high-end PC, you can't just use the Surface Studio as a dummy monitor. Microsoft also included the Xbox wireless accessory. It's built into the studio. That's really cool. That means you can take your old Xbox One controller and connect it wirelessly up to this machine. However, this is not a gaming PC, so while you can play Gears of War 4 on there, it's going to struggle. You can be looking at this amazing display and be thinking to yourself, why can't it do more? Let's turn our attention to the 28-inch PixelSense display of the Surface Studio. It's literally the hallmark feature of this PC. Featuring a resolution of 4500 by 3000 or 192 DPI, the Surface Studio looks fantastic. It is easily the best display I've ever seen with my eyes. It has sRGB support, DCI-P3, and vivid color profiles all built into Windows 10. It's also individually color calibrated and we found it to be very accurate. It's also a 10-point multi-touch display. It also features an aspect ratio of 3 by 2. That sounds a little strange. It's because most monitors are 16 by 9, including a lot of laptops. Surface, though, as a brand, features 3 by 2 on all its devices, including the Surface Pro and Surface Book. And that carries over here, and it works very well. I'm a huge fan of 3 by 2 aspect ratio. Things just look bigger and look more natural to me. There's also, of course, the Surface Pen and Zero Gravity Hinge, which all work well here. One of the biggest questions about this studio is who is this device for? Now clearly I am not an artist and that makes this review a little bit difficult for me to do. I draw terribly and I'm not a huge pen user. However, I do like that zero gravity hinge. It does allow me to bring down the display. In fact, every time I write on Windows 10 and talk about inking, I find it weird because I'm at a desktop PC and I can't do any of that. Sure, a Surface Book is great, but I don't work on my Surface Book exclusively. This is the first PC and all-in-one device that allows me to actually use inking flawlessly and with ease, and that's a really big achievement. Unless you're an artist or an engineer or someone who needs this kind of PC, it's definitely hard to justify, although I totally 
fully understand the lustworthy nature of the Surface Studio. I guess that's a big hole in this review right now. I'm not a professional artist, so it's hard for me to evaluate the Surface Studio. We will be getting a professional artist in to actually take a look at it, and we'll do that in a separate video. But if you're just a regular consumer who's looking at this device as something for their home, it's definitely a tough sell. I want one myself, but I can't necessarily tell you go get a $4,000 machine. Now, if you're a gamer, I totally understand why you'd want this device, but you definitely should not buy it. I didn't even talk about the GPU, which there are two weird options here. You have a 965 M with two gigabytes of video memory, but it's also a higher end 980M with four gigabytes of video memory. Those aren't terrible and it's better than nothing, but compared to the Pascal series or the 1060, 1070, and 1080, which are now on the market, it definitely seems antiquated. I can't stress enough how impressive NVIDIA's Pascal series really is. We run it on the Razer Blade and it's phenomenal. Why they couldn't wait a few months to put that into this device, I'm really not too sure. But it's definitely a big hole in the game of the Surface Studio. Let's talk about some of the odds and ends of the Surface Studio. For instance, there's the Windows Hello camera, which is really, really nice. It has dual IR lenses on it, which basically helps illuminate you. I had no issues with it. It's one of the best cameras I've actually used on a desktop PC. So that's really nice. The accessories are also pretty good. You do have a keyboard and mouse that come with it. They're not the best out there, but for an all-in-one system, they're definitely pretty good. I really enjoy typing on the Surface keyboard, although I prefer the ergonomic version myself. Of course, these are Bluetooth devices you can actually connect up anything you want to the studio so bring your own keyboard bring your own mouse wired or wireless it doesn't matter but the ones that are included in the box are pretty decent in terms of audio fidelity the surface studio is actually very very good it features dolby 2.1 audio with a subwoofer in the base itself and it's really good it's more impressive than you would think it would be and i think microsoft did a really great job here considering the constraints that they had to deal with with engineering it when it comes to design, Microsoft has done an outstanding job and they deserve all the praise here. The engineering of this device is just fantastic and I bet you agree it looks really phenomenal. I also like how you can move this device with ease. It's easy just to pick up and slide around. So if you have a desk in an office and you just want to move it, no problem whatsoever. So what's the takeaway? I think Microsoft did a really good job with the Surface Studio when it comes to its design. I know you agree with me on that. But when it comes to the hardware itself, there are some holes in the game and it really kind of bothers me. Now, it also depends on what you need this device for. Actually, for my job, I could actually use this device and be very happy with it. I had no problems for my day-to-day -day activities, but if you're doing, say, video processing or you want to do gaming or high-end stuff, you are going to hit some walls here. And that's because Microsoft made some really odd choices. I don't know why they went with these older GPUs instead of waiting a few months, or why they went with a hybrid drive system instead of just pure SSD, which would have greatly improved things. Now, I totally understand Microsoft had some budgetary and engineering constraints to deal with when making this device, but I think they went a little too narrow here. If you're just going after artists and basically engineering professionals, why make a device that looks so great that others just can't buy? Why put in Xbox wireless controller support when you really can't be a high-end gaming PC? Now, it's hard to make a device that's for everybody, but Microsoft, I think, could have shot a little bit wider here and made this device a little bit more accessible to people who are willing to spend the money on it. For that, we're just going to wait until version 2 comes out. I think they're going to get a lot of positive feedback from people who want these changes, and I think they'll deliver it. But for now, you may want to hold off on the Surface Studio. So that's my review of the Microsoft Surface Studio. If you want the full review, head to Windows Central for more high-quality photos and benchmarks. Remember, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.